Comet Leonard makes its closest approach to Earth, and the Geminid meteor shower lights up the sky. Let's go outside and take a look at what you can see for December 2021. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. We've got quite a month ahead of us with everything from comets to meteor showers to some incredible views of Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn right after sunset. Regardless of your level of experience, there's going to be something in this video for you to go out and observe or image. We'll do this this month by breaking things down into five categories, beginning with the best meteor showers for December, moving on to the phases of the moon, taking a look at the best views of the planets, We'll have a special segment on Comet Leonard, which makes its closest approach to Earth on December 12th. And then we'll end with an incredible deep sky object that I would encourage all of you to try to go out and find. If you enjoy this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. But most importantly, let me know about your questions and experiences out observing in the comment section below. As a special promo code for the month of December, the Late Night Astronomy Merchandise Store is going to be running things at 10% off if you type in the promo code LATE NIGHT. Go on down to the store linked right below this video, put in that promo code, and enjoy some savings for the Christmas and holiday season. Now let's get started with our video today by taking a look at the best and easiest way to get into amateur astronomy by going outside and focusing on the best meteor showers for the month of December. One of the best meteor showers of the year peaks this December in the form of the Geminids. To see it, go outside around 10 p.m. on the night of December 13th and face towards the east. Look up until you see the constellation Gemini. And from there, you'll see the streaks of light, which are the particles of an asteroid that has traveled through our solar system, streaking through the nighttime sky for us to see below. On most years, you can hope to see upwards of 120 meteors per hour under dark skies, but this year a bright moon will cut down on those numbers, unless you stay up early into the morning on the 14th when the moon starts to have less of an impact. Be sure to wear warm clothing and take some coffee and hot chocolate this time of year for most of us, and try to give this show at least a couple hours of your time to get the most out of it. Remember with any meteor shower, the darker the skies and the longer you wait, the more impressive the show will be. The moon is a great target to start with in amateur astronomy, especially if you've just picked up your first equipment in the form of binoculars or a telescope. Go outside and study its phases and scan the surface of our closest neighbor, testing out your ability to find objects in the nighttime sky and studying the incredibly faint details of the lunar surface at various magnifications. Even if you have no equipment at all though, the moon is still a fun target to go out and study. So let's take a look at its phases for this month. We have a new moon beginning on December 4th. It's during this time that the moon rises and sets with the sun, pretty much making it not visible in the nighttime sky. We then move on to its first quarter phase on December 10th. This is my favorite time to observe the moon with a pair of binoculars or a telescope with the angle of the sunlight revealing a great wealth of detail on its surface. On the night of December 18th, the full moon will rise just as the sun sets, and the last quarter moon follows on December 26th. My lunar observing challenge for you this month is to go outside and take a picture of the moon. It can be with or without a telescope using a cell phone or a DSLR camera. Be sure to share that experience on social media and if you tag me at Late Night Astronomy on Twitter and Instagram, I may use some of the pictures next month to show off how impressive the work is that you all are doing, imaging the nighttime sky. Let's move deeper into our solar system and take a look at the best views of the planets for the month of December. As always, we'll begin with the closest planet to the sun, Mercury. 
Your best chance to see Mercury this month is going to be right after sunset as it rises into the southwest sky. Check it out on December 28th as it makes a close approach to Venus. Speaking of Venus, this incredibly bright object is easily viewed most of the month right after sunset in the southwest sky. It dominates the sky in the early evening as it continues to brighten and go through its phases. Here's a comparison of Venus at the start and end of this month, which shows the incredible difference in its size and phase. Mars begins to make its way into the early morning sky in the east and actually has a fairly close pass to the moon on December 31st, but it's not at its best position anytime soon for serious observing or imaging. Throughout the month of December, Jupiter and Saturn continue to put on an impressive show right after sunset as they move throughout the southwest sky. If you're looking to test the optics of your telescope at high magnification, you can find Uranus in the east after sunset and Neptune which continues to trail Saturn and Jupiter in the south for most of the early evening and night. My solar system observing challenge for you this month is to go outside and take one final view or image of Venus at the start and end of this month to show the incredible journey that its phases have been on that we've been tracking for the past several months. Be sure to share your experience with me seeing it in the comment section below. All right, our main event for December and the reason why most of you are probably here watching this video is the close approach of Comet Leonard that we've all been anticipating for weeks and months. Comets are one of the most remarkable things in our solar system because they represent the formation of it billions of years ago. They're the collection of rock, ice, and debris from the formation of it that travel towards the sun and begin to shed off their ice and gas, creating the beautiful tail that we all love to go out and observe and image. Discovered in January of this year, we've been tracking it for several months on this channel as we highly anticipate its close approach to Earth on December 12th. To see it right now, go outside in the morning around 4 or 5 a.m. and face towards the east. Look up to the constellation Ursa Major looking for the Big Dipper. You'll find the star Alcade at the bottom of the Big Dipper. Move to the right of that star until you come across the Canis Venetici and Coma Berenices constellations. Around that area is where you're going to find Comet Leonard at the start of the month. Some great opportunities to observe or image it will be on December 3rd when it moves past the impressive globular cluster M3. On the early morning of December 6th, it travels through the constellation Boots and will be centered pretty much right between Arcturus and Izar. As it leaves the constellation Boots, we get an idea of how fast this comet is moving past Earth as it noticeably moves through the night sky at an incredibly fast rate on a daily and even hourly basis from our perspective. As December 12th approaches, Comet Leonard will make its closest approach to Earth and come within 21.7 million miles of our planet on that date. But that's actually not going to be the best time to go out to observe or image it due to how low it's going to be to the horizon. I think the best time for us to go out and see this target is going to be between December 3rd and December 11th, knowing that as you get closer and closer to the 12th, you'll have brighter and better images of it. After its closest approach to Earth, the best time to view it will now be in the early evening just after sunset. Depending on how bright it actually gets, one nice opportunity to try to view it after sunset could be when it's just below the planet Venus on December 17th. At this point, Comet Leonard will begin to dim significantly each night as it continues towards its closest approach to the sun on January 3rd and slingshots back into the outer reaches of our solar system. Comets are very unpredictable. It's quite possible that Comet Leonard could disintegrate and fall apart right after I post this video, or it could exceed expectations and even be a fun target to look at in the sunset in the southwest a few days after it passes by our planet. 
We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Regardless of the outcome, be sure to get out and see it as soon as you can, and let me know about your experience observing or imaging it in the comment section below. As we leave Comet Leonard behind, let's take a look at the best deep sky object for the month of December. Simply put, there is one deep sky object that I would recommend to you this month to go out and see, whether you're a beginner or have years of experience. And if you're familiar with the night sky, you probably know the one I'm gonna mention, the Great Orion Nebula. I've been observing and imaging this target for over 10 years, and I come back to it every year and am amazed by the beauty and elegance of the cloudy formation that you see hovering within the constellation Orion. To find it, go outside around 9 or 10 p.m. this December and face towards the southeast. As you look up into the sky, you're going to come across the constellation Orion. Use a low power eyepiece to find the three stars that make up Orion's belt, and then slowly pan down until you come across some gray looking clouds floating in space. These clouds are the Orion Nebula, an impressive stellar nursery of new stars being born that you have just seen with your own eyes from your own backyard. Remember that amateur astronomy is not easy, but that also makes it all the more rewarding when you do find something like this impressive target. Those are just some of the best targets to get out and see this December. Please be sure to let me know of your experience and questions observing or imaging anything on this list or anything you think I may have left off in the comment section below. I'd like to wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday Season. And as always, clear skies from Late Night Astronomy.